games. Also, be nice. My daughter insisted her new preschool teacher's name was M Mr. Penis. <laughs> we argued over it until one day we finally saw it in writing. Ms. Derpiness. Her name was Ms. Derpiness. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> What's up, my beardos and weirdos? One topic here, and today we're diving back into r slash staff owner friend. For anybody who's new here or hasn't seen this subreddit covered before, a quick summary of it would be that it's a funny collection of sometimes wholesome misunderstandings and misconceptions mixed together with some more intentional erasure, but most often with the clear intent of focusing on the humorous side of things. And that's honestly, I think, one of the reasons why we like it so much is it's just, it's so off the wall silly sometimes <laughs> all right <laughs> let's get started oh by the way if you are interested in the plushies they are on a very limited release so grab them fast and i'll leave a link in the comments and they live here now okay thank you he learned something new today how are you peeing your pants you have a tampon in <laughs> what serious? did you say she has a tampon in she, she, are you peeing on your tampon <laughs> What? <laughs> okay, who's gonna tell him? <laughs> no. three holes. You have three holes down there? And I pee out of one of them. Not the same one as the tampons. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> is this true? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Is, is this true? That's such a wholesome moment. I love that. That's such a good group of friends to just take a moment while things are getting kind of serious and just say, you know what? I'm I'm okay with teaching about this. Let's let's have a chat. <laughs> I swear to God, lesbians are so oblivious. You could both be flirting and they'd be like, oh wait, was this for real? You could be on a date and they'd be like, whoa, so this was a date date? <laughs> You're walking down the aisle and saying your vows and they're like, Huh? We're really more than friends? <laughs> Thought you were just being nice. Ha ha! <laughs> I have the feeling there's going to be more than a couple people feeling targeted in the comments. <laughs> because they're not roommates? I'm using roommates in the historical sense. <laughs> There is precedent for that. <laughs> Me! Reading about women in ancient Greece who could devote their entire lives to being a virgin priestess of hallucinogenic honey. God, I wish that was me. Me! Remembering that ancient Greeks understood virgin as unmarried and not chaste. I too wish I was a lesbian surrounded by my fellow lesbians while tripping on honey. Oh my goodness. <laughs> None angry, two women kissing in photo shoot. Oh, I remember this. The unintelligible parts roughly translate to these girls are merely roommates please please stop recording they are friends <laughs> just gals being pals okay have you seen the original hang on i'll i'll bring it up <laughs> this angry nun split up two models kissing on the street for a magazine photo shoot what are you doing this is the devil's work <laughs> hail satan <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> oh, jeez. At least they're taking a good stride. Alexander the Great meets Hephaestion, roughly 300 BCE. If homosexuality isn't contagious, then why do I always have homosexual thoughts whenever my friend takes his shirt off? <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of gold buried on Korra. <laughs> Hello, Colonel. This is Diana Prince. May I have today off? Last night's party was uh, strenuous. Oh, certainly, my dear girl. <laughs> you must have had a gay time. Now, how did he know that? <laughs> Me, learning cursive just to write love letters to my girlfriend, only for historians to one day find it and label us as extremely close friends. <laughs> Pen pals, even. <laughs> when your girlfriend tells you she's bi, but you already knew she spoke two languages. <laughs> Duh. Oh, the confidence. <laughs> I think they're just being silly. This, this one's fine. They're just... <laughs> well, let's forget about it. That's what I like about fighting with you, Heedy. Making up is so much fun. Oh, come on, you two. The party's starting. And it looks like I've got two dates. 
fella, from where I'm sitting, it looks like you have no dates. <laughs> Several comments were saying, dude's got two wives. Okay. <laughs> I surprised my wife with a puppy on our wedding day. <laughs> oh, that's too cute. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're the only gonna understand the situation if she was literally holding the puppy. They just finished the ceremony. They just walked out from the ceremony together. Where is she gonna hide the puppy? In the bouquet in a dress? The dresses don't even have pockets. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, daddy. We were practicing CPR. <laughs> So today at the beach, after a beautiful bro bonding time, me and my bro, we had a nice, beautiful, camaraderie fueled little kissing session. And <laughs> it was so beautiful and, and it's so cool to know that ancient Greek men would do this uh, before battle. Same with my Celtic ancestors who would not only kiss each other on the lips, they'd also kiss each other's n They would literally suck and share each other's beds uh, to release oxytocin and help to battle their endocrine <laughs> systems. And even in modern day Iran, modern day Egypt, you will see men actually holding hands, kissing each other on the lips <laughs> uh, and walking down the street, sitting on each other's laps, holding hands, doing all this sort of thing. So it's just us North Americans. We're a little bit brainwashed, but straight guys since the dawn of man have been kissing each other on the lips. So you're missing. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, if you want to kiss your homies, you can kiss your homies. That's it's always been fine. <laughs> A camaraderie fueled kissing session between bros. I love that. <laughs> Giselle isn't trans though. He just identifies as a woman. That's literally what trans means. A friend from high school married her lady love, and then came the elderly relatives. Aww. It was such a beautiful wedding. 422-22. Love you guys. These pictures are beautiful. What a beautiful wedding. It truly was a beautiful Double ceremony. Double wedding? Are both girls? This is their parents' name? Beautiful. <laughs> Grandpa Jim, get off Facebook. <laughs> this Taco Bell ad has Sappho and her friend vibes. Okay. Birthday breakfast in bed. <laughs> Best roommate ever. This is so weird. I just dreamt this. Dreamt what? You bringing me breakfast in bed? <laughs> that is weird. So what happened? Well, you ended up giving me all your cinnamon delights because you love me. Oh. Yeah, that definitely was a dream. <laughs> was it though? <laughs> okay, Taco Bell. I see you. <laughs> Dude, your friends are really cute. Are they single? They're lesbians. Oh, sure. Oh. <laughs> it's been a while since I've watched the show, but isn't that like every time Finn gets a crush? <laughs> Aw, Finn. Happy International Friendship Day. I don't know. They seemed... Have you seen Swiss Army Man? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Shepard is so beautiful. Don't be jealous, Liara. You're pretty too. I'm not being jealous, Garrus. I'm being gay. I always kiss my nieces and nephews goodnight. Oh, no, Uncle. You've got a scratchy beard. I'll kiss your wife. Uh, she can pass it on to you. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Why can't girls do this? I don't know. <laughs> fella, I think they might be able to. <laughs> Hello, fellas. This is another job the men will want when they come home. <laughs> Sorry, boys. The position's been filled. <laughs> oh, dear. Ernie from Sesame Street. Friend of Bert. Okay. Bert. Roommate. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Historians! This man died without marrying and with no children or any romantic interests. But he did live with his male best friend most of his life, and they had a very close friendship. <laughs> All the gays around the world. Mm. <laughs> Just two girls chilling in a hot tub right beside each other because they are gay but still can't differentiate between platonic affection and romantic intimacy. Oh, no. 
My grandpa gave me his copy of Moby Dick from 1962. Um, twice or thrice kissed his nose and with that done undressed and went to bed at peace with her own conscious homosexuality. Hmm. <laughs> they were shipmates. <laughs> this is my grandfather on the left. My mother told me that's the neighbor on the right. I'm like, nah, that's his shorty. Aww. <laughs> There are no gay people in Japan. Uh, yeah, there are. I used to date one. Cute little translator. Could carry with one arm. Either they weren't gay or they weren't Japanese. Sorry, but you were deceived. Uh, Will Byers is gay. Robin Buckley is lesbian. More proof of the soft generation begging for representation. Will is straight. <laughs> Robin is confused. Shut the front door. Sick of this. Get out of here. I don't think you've seen the show. <laughs> Stranger Things characters being LGBTQ plus is unrealistic. It's the 80s. There is a Demogorgon in the show. Be serious. Hi everyone! I'm still mad we never learned in school that Shakespeare was bi and wrote sonnets about a dude and a woman of color he was into. Hi everyone! I'm still mad that we were told Emily Dickinson was a spinster when she spent her whole life writing love letters to a woman. Hi everyone! I'm still mad about the fact that we never got taught any of the super super gay Greek myths. It seems impossible to think that they managed to pick all the hetero myths when Greece was just that gay. But guess what? They did! Hi everyone. Virginia Woolf was also bi. I'm still mad that so much of literature is queer and has queer coding within it that deserves to be analyzed through that lens in the same way that we don't ignore the gender of an author. But sexuality is never mentioned in high school literature classes. Hi everyone, I'm still mad that we were never taught that Da Vinci was gay AF and that the ideal western world has of Jesus, white, long, straight brown hair, was based on one of his male lovers. Hi everyone, I'm still mad that we were taught Sir Isaac Newton died a virgin when he had multiple boyfriends over the course of his life, one of whom he wrote passionate love letters to and lived with. I'm glad that we're able to find a lot of this information now because it makes history so much more interesting. <laughs> Google knows what's up. Friendship films about gay. Oh. Uh, hmm. <laughs> In 1778, two Irish gentlewomen put on men's clothing and ran away together. Lady Eleanor Butler had received several offers of marriage, but was determined to share her life with her friend Sarah Ponsonby. They spent the rest of their lives in a black and white house called Plas Nuyid, outside Langolin, cultivating their garden, improving their minds, and filling the house with clocks cabinets, and whirly gigs of every shape and hue. They also had a little dog called Sappho. <laughs> Friend. They literally named their dog Sappho. Roommates in a historical way. <laughs> Michelangelo wrote poems to another man, Tommaso de Cavalieri. After his death, his grandnephew published his poems and changed the pronouns of the person addressed from masculine to feminine. <sighs> Last week, there was a court case in Sweden that was brought forward entirely thanks to aphobia, and luckily was resolved by the Swedish court recognizing queer platonic relationships. So here's a thread explaining what happened. Two women lived together on a farm, had shared finances, and for all intents and purposes were in a relationship. Some perceived the pair as merely friends, while others saw them as a couple. In 2018, one of the women died, and this is where the aphobia comes in. The woman who died had life insurance, and the payout was designed to go to her husband, partner, cohabitant, or secondary relative. This ignited a debate between the woman's family and the woman she had been living with as to who was entitled to the compensation. Both sides agreed that the women were living together at the time of death. The disagreement was based on whether they met the definition of a partnership. The family argued that they were just friends, as the women didn't have sex and therefore couldn't be partners. Swedish law states that a relationship means that the persons shall live together in a relationship where sexual cohabitation is normally included. The Supreme Court said that this statement does not mandate how it should be in the individual cohabitation relationship. They instead said that the law indicates that the relationship should be at an emotional level where sex is usually part of a similar relationship but isn't a requirement. Therefore, cohabitation can be determined on other factors, regardless of whether a couple are actually having sex. They said that of importance in the assessment is whether there is a special affiliation and trust between the people and a willingness to share a life together that is similar to what usually exists between those 
those who choose to marry each other. This meant that the court deemed that the women were in a relationship and that the other woman should receive the payout. This is huge as far as asexual awareness is considered. Most countries have laws that penalize partners in sexless marriages. It is a massive step towards recognition for QPRs and normalizing the idea that significant relationships without sex can occur. Here is the original article if you want to read more. I'm very proud of this romantic comedy we made. Very proud. It's not bromantic, it's romantic. If you hate this show, don't worry. I still love you. And I hope you begin to understand the many layers that love can encompass. Love is love, baby. Our flag means death. I think that's a good place to end today's video. I haven't seen all of our flag means death, but I really look forward to catching up on it. All right, my beardos and weirdos. We'll see you in the next one, where we take it one topic at a time. Roll that out. Get out of here. Mr. Penis. <laughs>